Evening Queen Mary fans, it's Dan again. Welcome back. Welcome to the second episode of our series of quarantine bartending tutorials. Um, today we're going to make for you a martini. Now of course, uh, the martini is not original to us at Queen Mary. Uh, however, we have been pushing it on you for the last four years, um, so I figured I, I owe you an explanation uh, of why. Uh, the martini, I suppose, is a bit of a paradox. It's the most iconic of all classic cocktails. Uh, the, the very shape of, of, of the glass that it traditionally is served in is a symbol for cocktails in general. Um, and yet, it's a very confusing cocktail because there's not just one definitive martini, um, but rather there's many. Uh, is it shaken or stirred? Gin or vodka? Is it dry or wet? Do you garnish it with an olive or a lemon twist? Is it classic or dirty? Um, even There was even a time in the 90s uh, when practically any cocktail served in a glass with a stem like this was referred to as a martini. Uh, remember apple teenies and chocolate martinis and espresso martinis and all the rest. Now, uh, for our own part here at Queen Mary, um, while of course we always make you the cocktail you order exactly the way you order it, uh, we've made plenty of vodka martinis and shaken martinis and dirty martinis. We do it all the time. Um, but we have made a certain effort uh, to draw your attention to the original, to the classic gin martini. Uh, and this is because uh, it's tended, in the midst of all of this chaos, to fall by the wayside. But we believe it deserves its iconic status. We believe it's, it's, it's a minimal and an elegant and a perfect thing, and it deserves to enjoy a return. So that's what I'm going to fix for you today. The, uh, I'll tell you about uh, the ingredients. I'll tell you all of the steps. And if you feel like, just like with the last video, if you feel like hanging around to watch a little longer, I'll talk to you about substitutes. Uh, because even more than with the Navy Strength Old Fashioned, uh, this cocktail, the Martini, is not linked to any exact brands, but rather it allows uh, a wide range of possible choices. Uh, very good, so let's do it. The, as far as the tools, um, just like the Navy Strength Old Fashioned, this is a stirred cocktail. Um, so we'll need a, a, a mixing glass rather than a cocktail shaker. And the rest of the tools are exactly the same as we used last time. So no need to repeat ourselves there. Um, the ingredients are even fewer and even simpler. I've got gin, I have dry vermouth, and I have orange bitters. So the gin I've chosen for you today is Plymouth. Uh, Plymouth is one of the great classic English gins. It's not as famous as its London cousins, uh, Tanqueray or Beefeater, but it really is very beautiful. It's a little less heavy on the juniper than the London gins, uh, but it has uh, uh, a rich sort of burst of citrus zest, uh, uh, lemon and orange, um, a bit of spice, I believe it's cardamom and coriander, and it finishes, really its signature is that it finishes with a, a certain earthy or woody quality that lingers after the rest has faded. Um, so really it's a very beautiful gin. Uh, dry vermouth, uh, what I've chosen here is a brand of dry vermouth called Neuilly Pratt. Uh, Neuilly Pratt is in fact the original dry vermouth. Uh, it's from France, it's from the Mediterranean coast close to Marseille, uh, and if, once again, if you want to uh, uh, listen afterwards, I'll tell you some more about what dry vermouth is and how to choose a brand of dry vermouth if you don't happen to have this one. Um, I should say though, here for the moment, uh, that the most important thing to realize about, about dry vermouth uh, when you're making cocktails at home is that it is wine. It's not distilled spirits. So uh, like any red or white wine, once opened, it is perishable. It, uh, its, favor, its flavor will gradually fade away and eventually, after quite a while, it'll begin to develop off flavors. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that you have to drink it all up right away within a couple of days, but it does mean uh, that you should try and use it up within, let's say, a month. Uh, and if, this, if that sounds intimidating, and if that sounds uh, like it might be a challenge to drink this m many martinis in a month, it's very simple. All you need to do is get the smaller bottle. All major brands offer a 375 milliliter size. And store it in the refrigerator. That really is what's crucial. That will triple its lifespan or more. Uh, wonderful. If it seems a challenge still to drink that many martinis. Um, this may sound like a crazy thought, but I really uh, recommend trying just a glass of dry vermouth on the rocks with uh, an orange peel or a lemon peel, or a dry vermouth and soda, let's say, with, uh, with a, a slice of orange. Uh, very unfamiliar way of drinking vermouth in this country, 
but it's how it's consumed in France, in its country of origin. It really is very wonderful. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, perfect. So for this cocktail, for this martini, uh, we are going to uh, make it with two ounces of gin. We're going to pour one ounce of dry vermouth and one dash of orange bitters. And just like last time, I'm going to go from the uh, least expensive ingredient to the most to minimize the cost of any mistakes. And just like last time, that means saving the main spirit for last. Now we have to load it up with ice. And stir. Now you have to stir a martini quite a bit longer than we stirred the Navy Strength Old Fashioned. Remember what I said about the Navy Strength Old Fashioned, you, should, you shouldn't stir it until it's done. You shouldn't stir it to completion, you should leave it a little hot because it's going to go on the rocks. With, there's going to be ice in the glass. Well the martini will not go on the rocks, there will not be any ice in the glass. It's going to be served in, of course, its, its traditional V-shaped stemmed glass. So I need to stir it until it's ready to drink. Because that's the way it's going to stay the entire time that it's in the glass. And just like with the Navy Strength Old Fashioned, easiest way to figure that out is to stir a little, have a taste, stir a little more, have another taste. And you'll see how it's changing. Mm. Beautiful. Now the setup I've got here may look a little exotic to you. Uh, this is a very small martini glass, and on the side I have a carafe, a tiny carafe, resting in crushed ice inside of another glass. That's because here at Queen Mary what we do is we put the first half of your cocktail in a very small martini glass so that the second half can stay cold while you're drinking the first half. And that way you never have to... Mm, there it is. You never have to endure the, uh, the horror of a warm martini, because more than any other cocktail, really no one likes a warm martini. It's just not very nice. And uh, in case you want to replicate this setup at home, all you have to do is find yourself a very small cocktail glass. I'm using these V-shaped traditional ones, uh, but of course it doesn't really matter what shape of glass you use. Any small glass works just fine. So for instance, this kind is called a coupe, or uh, this kind here is called a Nick and Nora glass. Anything that's nice and, and, and small that you think is attractive. Uh, so you put half of your cocktail in there, and then the rest, just pour it into whatever other glass you have on hand, a small glass from your kitchen, and put it in the freezer. And leave it there while you drink the first half, and that way you'll always have uh, a perfect cold martini. Uh, so finally, I'm going to garnish this. There are two traditional garnishes for a gin martini. Uh, one of them is a green olive. Here we use Castle Petrano olives. Uh, of course, that's wonderful. Use that if you prefer. What I'm going to do for this one right now is a, is a lemon peel. I'm going to cut this piece of lemon peel a little bit shorter and narrower than I did for the Navy Strength Old Fashioned because I have a much smaller glass. But the, uh, the, the general purpose is the same. The, uh, the yellow exterior of the lemon peel is full of those little cells of fragrant lemon essential oil. So I just want to pinch them very gently in order to spray a cloud, a fine mist of lemon oil over the top of my martini so that the aroma will rise to my nose before the liquor hits my mouth. And that's a martini. Cheers. <laughs>